January 2024 is upon us and with that means the new ban list takes effect, which means it's going to change up the format quite significantly and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what cards you need to be using in your side deck to be competitive and successful in today's format. And I'm going to be breaking down card by card discussing why it's so powerful in today's format. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. All right, so in today's video, there's a lot of cards that I actually want to be discussing, and they range from everything, going first cards, going second cards, spells, traps, monsters, and everything in between. And I want to show you guys for the January 1st, 2024 format, what you guys can side and be very successful with. And pretty much you can use these cards in any deck, which is really nice. So the first two cards I want to talk about is Pankratops, as well as Koshtara Fenrir. Now, the reason I think these two cards are really powerful in the side deck, while I think Fenrir is actually better in the main deck, I think they're both really powerful in the side deck because one Pankratops came back to two. Pankratops coming back to two means it's a very viable side deck option now. It's more likely that you're going to be able to see this card when you do side it in against your opponents. And it has multi purpose where it's really good against front row matchups as well as back row matchups because it can do the thing where it can destroy any card your opponent controls. So while you can special summon it, you can use its effect, tribute it, pop a card your opponent controls. It's really powerful because you can use it to dodge effects. So, like, let's say you're going into the battle phase and like your opponent, you know, uses effect to pop this card, then you can activate this quick effect, tribute it, pop another card they control, effect making your opponent lose a card on top of that if you are doing the battle phase tricks because it is 2600 you can actually destroy a monster your opponent controls and then activate its effect to pop another card your opponent controls now fenrir is really powerful because it works very similarly where on its own going first it's a disruption for you so if you are siding this going first you can just actually just end on a fenrir on your side of the field and that in itself is a disruption but going second of course you can attack with it activate its effect to banish a monster your opponent controls and these two work really well hand in hand because fenrir you have to control no monsters to special summon it while Pankratops, your opponent just has to control more monsters than you so what does that mean if your opponent has two monsters on the board you can special summon your fenrir and your opponent still will have more monsters than you do you have one they'll have two potentially more and then you can special summon the Pankratops. so these two work really well hand in hand in the side deck now while i think fenrir is actually better in the main deck just because it's so good going first and second i think Pankratops is a card that definitely needs to see play in the side deck in today's format i just think it's so powerful and consistent in that sense but if you are siding both of these it works very well as well because again you can side these both in together and they work really well together on top of that lastly goes in match it's at one now but they're both earth monsters so they actually both work under goes in match as well which is really powerful so now i want to talk about thrust and tactics now tactics talent and thrust are two very powerful cards now while these two cards are really good in the side deck i actually think these are better cards in the main deck and i wanted to talk about them right now just because i wanted to say that if you guys are siding these cards it is very powerful to side however i actually just think they're better in the main deck because these two cards are pretty much live against every single matchup you guys are going to see in the format whether it's rescue ace whether it's fire king whether it's labyrinth whether it's uh bestial runic whether it's any of the chimera runic builds or the branded builds any of those kind of decks they will all lose to this card and that's why i think these two cards are really powerful in the side deck however there's another card that i think is the most important card in the format to be siding right now and i'm going to get into that a little bit later but there's a way to essentially play around these cards and beat these cards because you know your opponent most of the time is going to have these cards whether it's in the main deck or in the side deck so you are going to be expecting to see these cards and you need ways around them and i'm going to be showing you guys those ways in a little bit later and why you know one of these cards in the side deck that i'm going to be showing you guys is so powerful these cards though i just want to talk about real quick i don't think they should be in the side deck i personally think they should be in the main deck however if you don't have room to main deck them they're really powerful side deck cards as well so next up are what i consider to be the generic back row board breakers evenly matched lightning storm and harpy's feather duster i think these cards are really generically powerful and what i mean by that is essentially they can go into any single format there's always going to be some kind of back row deck some kind of deck that goes really wide and then for that reason evenly matched lightning storm and harpy's feather duster are always going to see play the nice thing about evenly matched and lightning storm is they also deal with front row matchups as well harpy's of course is mainly for the back row matchups but evenly matched and lightning storm are really really powerful against back row matchups as well now while these these cards are just again like i said earlier generic they can really be good into any format i think they're really powerful in today's format especially evenly matched because if you're playing evenly matched against a rescue ace and or a labyrinth player not only are you breaking their board but you're also getting rid of a majority of their resources and being able to get rid of a majority of their resources even though you're not going to be able to otk your opponent because you're losing your battle phase you're pretty much going to be winning the game because at that point you're going to have so much advantage and that's why i think evenly matched is so powerful in today's format lightning storm harpy's feather duster of course 
really powerful cards as well. And the really cool thing about all these cards and why I think they're actually better as side deck options than they are in the main deck is because they're all cards that can be searched with thrust. And this is why I mean, like you can side thrust in because thrust can search you your talents over here. So thrust can search you even these lightning storm or Harvey's feather duster. And that's a really powerful thing with thrust. But that's why I think thrust is actually better in the main deck, because what ends up happening with thrust is if you're main decking different options for the thrust target, you can side out those options and side in the correct options, right? Now, keep in mind something else I want to mention. Don't just side one, one, and one. I mean, Harpies is, of course, at one, so you have to side one. Side multiple of these, unless you're playing Thrust. If you're playing Thrust, then you can get away with playing one. But if you're not playing Thrust, side multiple of these because these cards are just too powerful in today's format. Now, two more board breakers for you. However, these are more monster heavy board breakers Mind Control and Change of Heart. I actually think these are the best board breakers of the format right now. Mind Control, of course, being back at three is absolutely insane. Change of Heart, of course, is only at one. However, I would still play all of them, all four of them. Also, on top of that, they're searchable off thrust as well that's why thrust is so powerful you search all of these powerful board breaking cards and these cards are the reason why i think they're really powerful is because they're just generically good so what i mean by that i mean that essentially your opponent either has to have the negate to stop these cards or you're taking their monster and the really cool thing about taking your opponent's monster is if you're playing decks that have any link monsters or synchro monsters or something like that you can take your opponent's monster use it as a link material and now you've effectively broken their board now imagine your opponent has something as simple as a baron on the board right let's just say they have a baron on the board you go train your heart or you go mind control one or the other right they have to either negate this and if they do okay cool you just ate up the baron negate now i can do full combo because the baron negate's gone or if they've already used the baron negate i can mind control take my opponent's baron use the baron effect to pop a card they control then once i do that i can use the baron another card i control link it off now i've broken their board right and the really powerful thing about mind control is mind control is not a hard once per turn and so why that's really powerful is that if you have three mind control in your deck and you side in three mind control and you see two of them okay activate mind control negate cool let me activate the second one what are you going to do now, right? So that's the really cool thing about mind control as well as change of heart. Now, certain cards that I think are really powerful in today's format, of course, are SP Little Knight. And SP Little Knight has to target two monsters on the board. So if you're going mind control on an opponent's SP Little Knight and they don't have any other monsters and you don't have any other monsters because let's say you start with a mind control or you start with a change of heart, then you're just taking their SP Little Knight. And that's just a disruption that is really difficult to deal with and really powerful in today's format. And being able to break SP Little Knight boards is really powerful. Now, another really cool card is Fenrir. Now, let's say your opponent is playing Fenrir because of course this is just a generic card if they end on fenrir as a you know just a generic disruption you can go mind control target the fenrir now if you take the fenrir what can you do if you're playing fenrir in your own deck you can activate the fenrir effect to search another fenrir which is really powerful on top of that because you can't attack with mind control you do not get the battle phase tricks however you can just link this away and if you link this away then you're getting rid of that disruption for you which is really powerful change of heart is really nice because it doesn't actually stop you from attacking so if you do use change of heart you can at least attack with fenrir uses a board breaker but with mind control you're taking this card you can activate its effect to search another Fenrir, which is really powerful. So again, these two cards are absolutely insane. And because they're not once per turns, of course, Change of Heart is only at one, but because they're not once per turns, I think they're the most powerful board breakers in today's format. So two more generic cards I want to talk about are Solemn Judgment and D-Barrier. I think these are the two most generic going first side deck cards in today's format. D-Barrier against Centurion, you can call Synchro. Against Bestial Runic, you can call Synchro. Against, you know, so many different decks, you can call either Synchro, Fusion, Branded, you can call Fusion, etc, etc. So D-Barrier is really, really powerful and Solemn Judgment as well. If you're going first and you can just set up a simplistic board, whatever your deck aims to do, let's say your deck aims to put up a negate or two negates, if you're ending on a Solemn Judgment as well, you're pretty much always going to be winning the game. The reason for that is because if you are playing a monster heavy board and your opponent has cards like dark ruler no more forbidden droplet or anything of that sense you can use judgment to just negate that and then you're going to still continue to have your board presence whereas if you don't have the solemn judgment you're going to have to use your board to negate cards like that and then this way your opponent is breaking your board right so solemn judgment makes it so that your opponent really just can't break any board that you make and the barrier stops your opponent from really making any boards at all so these are just two generic cards that i wanted to bring up real quick because they're good into pretty much every single matchup and they can be used in pretty much every single deck that's being played right now so if you're playing Bustio Runic, if you're playing Branded, if you're playing Rescue Ace, it does not matter. You can always side these two cards in and they're always going to be relevant. Okay, so there's two more cards I want to talk about. The first one here being Anti-Spell. I think this is the best side deck card, hands down, for today's format. This card is absolutely insane. Fire King, one of the best decks of the format with the Diabella Star engine, automatically beats that engine, right? Because, first of all, they can't just use a Wanted right away with the Anti-Spell on the board. They can't use Fire King Sanctuary. This card absolutely demolishes Fire King. Now, you guys might be wondering, okay, but it's just Fire King. Okay, what about Rescue Ace? Rescue Ace uses a Wanted engine as well, or the Diabella Star engine, right? Okay, cool. So now I'm just stopping on the whole Wanted 
engine with just a single card. Now, remember when I talked about earlier, I was talking about thrust and uh, talents, as well as mind control and all these cards over here that you know you're going to see, you know your opponent is going to have, right? Well, if you're just ending your board on, let's say, just your whatever your standard board is, let's say it's like two monsters or whatever, you can flip an anti-spell. Now, all of these cards your opponent has that they've sided in, right? Let's say they side these cards in against you. They're all dead they can't use any of these cards. So not only have you just shut out their engine with anti-spell, you've also shut out a lot of the non-engine because it makes it so that your opponent can now not break your board. So not only have you stopped them from making a board, you've also made it so that your opponent cannot break your board. It's really good against cards like Lightning Storm as well, and it's just so powerful, I think, in today's format. Now, you're going to see also a lot of rogue decks. Now, against a lot of rogue decks, this is really powerful as well. Imagine something like Sky Striker, of course, that just being the obvious answer. But Sky Striker with Upstart being back at three, I know has been picking up a little bit more in popularity and if you're flipping something like anti-spell you're automatically winning the game even the runic builds right you guys might be wondering okay but the runic builds are all quick play if i activate spell anti-spell then you know you're gonna have to use all the runic cards cool but they can't get to a fountain on the board. They can't, you know, how many runic cards really are they going to use to actually do anything before you, you know, this resolves. They have to specifically have the one that pops back row. I, I forget which one it is, but they have to have specifically the one that pops back row or else this card is resolving and, and you're essentially winning the game, right? So anti-spell, I think, is absolutely insane in today's format. The best side deck card, I think, right now in today's format. But lastly, Cosmic Cyclone. Now, the reason I want to talk about Cosmic Cyclone is because I feel like a lot of people are going to be playing Anti-Spell. And you never want to be put in the situation where your opponent is flipping Anti-Spell and you're losing the game. Because now you have all these spell cards, power spells in your hand that you guys can't use. Cosmic Cyclone does help you against cards like Anti-Spell. It's also just really good generically going into Labyrinth or any back row matchups. Being able to get rid of field spells and whatnot is really, really powerful. So Cyclone is just generically really good. But specifically, the reason I like Cyclone in today's format is because I'm really afraid of Anti-Spell. And I think anti-spell is one of the best side deck cards in the game right now so while lightning storm and harpy's feather duster are all really powerful cards against back row if your opponent flips an anti-spell these cards don't do anything whereas cosmic cyclone does so you have to be really careful depending on the deck that you play what you guys want to side because if you are playing a deck that relies heavily on your spell cards then you want to make sure you guys can side cards like cosmic cyclone because that's essentially your only way out to anti-spell fragrance right so i just wanted to talk about that real quick cosmic cyclone here because i think anti-spell is actually the most powerful side deck card in the format. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on the best side deck cards for the January 2024 format. Now keep in mind, certain decks can side in certain cards that other decks may not be able to. For example, Labyrinth can put in cards like Erad, which you won't really see in any other deck. However, these side deck cards that I showed you guys are the most generic that you can play in any single deck and be very, very competitive with. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We are uploading every single day in the month of December. December is almost over. So if you guys want to see everything that we've already uploaded and everything yet to come, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned into all that. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.